Oh, it's good to be back. So, as you can imagine, spent a lot of time here, and it can be a little challenging to leave and be away from Akiva. I really love being here and making progress, but it was important to go down to the show. It's a, it's a great time to meet people from all over and talk to different folks with different experiences and check out all the different products that are there. Uh, a lot of the show is fiberglass boats, but whether it's a fiberglass boat or a wood boat, they use the same sails, the same anchors, same all of that jazz. Um, so we're gonna take you to the show and talk to some vendors and check the scene out, meet some old friends, make some new ones. But before we get to that, we're gonna dive into a little bit of galley work before we took off. So we're gonna play with some cherry and some locusts and get a little spot put behind the counter where we're gonna be able to store you know, the olive oil and the things like that we use on a regular basis. Uh, so let's check that out and then uh, head down to the Annapolis Boat Show. Before the storage areas get figured out, Steve cut patterns for the sides of the countertop. These will get cut from the remnants of the homemade oak and cedar plywood Steve's been using throughout the interior. Couldn't do that on a finished sole now, could you? top but I want to cut it down from the top a little bit and I'm going to cut the rebate so I don't really care if this is perfect or not because when I cut the rebate in the top I'll just tweak it an angle ever so slightly to match so it's not a big deal. So tune the aft bulkhead and move forward.
From here, Steve moved on to building the cherry and locust storage cabinetry going behind the countertop. The Delta Planer's seen a lot of boards on this project, and you can probably hear that it's struggling a bit these days. Next week, Steve will set up a brand new planer that should save him a ton of time, so stay tuned for that next Friday. Steve worked on his own in the boathouse for the next few days, finishing up the cabinetry around the sink. And Grandpa was on hand to help bring the bulkheads that were getting painted and varnished the last time we saw them. Rod sticking up for Those support the counter, but they're unbolted right now because I gotta take the counter out and do a little more work to it. the pieces. Now I just got to figure out the order of assembly here and we can put her together. That's a good boy. So I got to attach the uh, backsplash piece here and to do that I have to take these braces out. It's a good sign it's floating. So I got the bolts in here, they're just finger tightened, and then I put a ratchet strap down here and pulled the bulkhead back to the build stringers. And that should hold all of this stationary until I can get the stuff built in the back, and then I'll be able to put the cleats that join these uh, bulkhead-ish sides of it down to the build stringers. And eventually, a faceplate's gonna go in the front here that's gonna ride on top of the frames, and that'll really stop this uh, inboard face of it from wanting to drop. But for now, let's pop these braces out and hopefully this doesn't move. Okay, we'll get the tools together and put the backsplash on. So I want the, the fit in the back here to be one and three quarter inches tall. So I just clamped these one and three quarter inch blocks to it. And that way the height register is pretty easy. Throw another clamp on here and then I'll crawl back there and drill it and fasten it. So far I'm really happy with how it's looking and coming out. I'm out. So, 
This is going to go there. And this one here. And these are already drilled, so I just got to put them in place and fasten them. Which would be pretty simple. Do. I got the cubby back here all mounted and the next thing that I have to do is put in some sort of ceiling. So ceiling in boats is not above your head. Uh, ceiling goes between where the build stringers here are and up to the clamp. And what that does is it makes sure that it keeps things off of the planking. Uh, that way if you have a hull that's leaking a little bit for some reason, it's not getting your stuff all wet. Uh, it helps with ventilation. It kind of creates a, a warm spot up below the deck and a cool spot in the bilge. And that ceiling makes a chimney. It helps draw airflow up through there. There's a lot of advantages to it. But in boats, basically, uh, it's, everything's a compromise. It just about permanently covers up your frames. So seeing what's going on in there, cleaning in there, doing any maintenance, any repairs is incredibly difficult. And a lot of boats the ceiling is put in and then the interior furniture is built over it. So you have to cut out parts of the ceiling. You're putting a bunch of holes into your frames when you attach all of those. So although it is very traditional and is very useful, it does have its quirks and its issues. Uh, so what I think I'm going to try here uh, is maybe a little unorthodox, but we're going to use some fiberglass. So many moons ago when I was doing construction work, uh, we were doing some bathroom remodels, and I have some sheets of fiberglass. This is what I'm talking about. One side's textured, the other side's nice and smooth. Uh, and I'm going to slide this back there, and I think this will work well as a, a ceiling. It'll keep things from going against the planking. It'll be easy to clean, uh, and I should be able to kind of slide it in and out of there. So if you needed to do some access, it would just be a couple screws and you take the whole sheet out and it would be a, a lot less holes in the frame and a really nice smooth back to the locker. The galley stove is going to go here and there's going to be some stainless steel work behind the galley stove. Uh, and then there's going to be another cubby like this built with a little storage in the back. Um, so all of that fiberglass will end up disappearing. You won't see it. And at some point, if we want to clean back there, we want to inspect those frames, it'll just be a couple fasteners and we'll be able to work that sheet out of there and be able to see what's going on. And we won't have to remove a whole ton of like tongue and groove paneling, which is normally what you'd use for sealing. So I think I'm pretty happy with how this is looking and shaping up. But I think it is time to go get ready to go to the boat show. So we fly out tomorrow morning and I have not done anything to prepare. I've been way too preoccupied with this. Uh, so I think this is a good pausing point. And uh, we'll pick this up after the show and I'm gonna go get ready for Annapolis. <laughs> Thanks, Cap. Have a good day. When you go 
Kyoto show, it's everybody assembled in one spot. It makes it easy to see people from almost all over the world. Yeah, for sure. It was neat to see such a wide range of people from all over and talk about experiences and what they want in boats and where they intend to go and what they intend to do. Super crazy. Yeah, how are you? We just bought a catamaran, so Congrats. it's going to be a good day. I can't believe how many catamarans are here. It's like catamaran town, honestly. Yeah, it's... yeah we just took the water taxi in and there were a lot of them out there, a lot of big catamarans. Nutty, totally yeah. nutty. You'd think there was some sail around the world craze going on or something. I don't know. The rest of it's cherry. That's gorgeous. And I'm just using a sheet of fiberglass as the ceiling behind yep. the lockers yep. so that it's super easy to come out and clean and do maintenance and stuff. That came out amazing. That's Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, so that's just mineral oil because it's, you know, food prep surface. I have a And then new, everything um, else is the gleam. This looks great. Which I got to get a hold of you because we need more. We're running okay. low. Yeah, I'll send it up. Um, we have a new food safe finished beeswax or like a wax and, and uh, oil thing. Ooh. Linseed oil. Yeah, awesome. yeah, when we get back from the show, I've got a little list I'll send your way. It's called Wood Honey. Wood Honey. Oh. Wood honey and it's in a little honey bear. Oh, wow. Came up with that. Wow. <laughs> One of the first things we did at the show was went live with John Harris, who's the owner and CEO of Chesapeake Lightcraft, and we talked tender design with him. So if you're interested in that conversation, uh, you can go check out that video. That was really great. Uh, and then we spent a bit of time walking around. Um, we talked to some folks from Seafrost and Blue Water Desalinators. Seafrost is actually the company that we're going to go with for the refrigeration. It hasn't been announced yet, um, but I did a lot of research and I asked Satchel, who you guys have seen before and who's a naval architect, to do some research into it and uh, see what he thought, because I think he's better equipped to kind of judge what would be a good system than I would be. And his recommendation was unequivocally Seafrost. So I called Seafrost and started to explain that I'm building a 38-foot double-ended catch and blah, blah, blah. And the guy's like, wait, are you Acorn to Arabella? Um, so it's cool. So they're going to help us out. And yeah, this is the first time actually laying eyes on one of the systems. So what really sold me and Satchel on these is that a lot of them come with a either evaporator plate or a holding plate. And this is kind of a, a little bit of a both. So it's an evaporation plate, but they do the evaporation plate out of stainless steel. Lots of times they're really flimsy aluminum. Um, so when you're shoving a whole bunch of stuff into the cooler, you don't have to worry so much about damaging it. It's much, much tougher than a traditional um, plate. And the other thing is the freezer setup is really cool. The stainless steel freezer bin. So what this is, is it's an evaporation plate on one side and an evaporation plate on the other. You put that in, it cools your whole refrigerator and anything between the evaporator plates will freeze. So you have an actual honest to God freezer. Not like it'll make ice, like it'll keep your ice cream cold. Um, and it's not big, but it, it's something. Nate from Seafrost spoke with Steve more in depth about their units, and we'll have a bonus episode coming with that conversation soon. Steve also talked a while with Jason Hudson from Mantis about the likely design and rig for Arabella's anchor. We got a bunch of different anchors here, and anchoring is something that we're going to have to do when the boat's done. On that boat, yeah. Did, did you tell me the um, ballast on that? What no, the yeah. So it's an Akron Ingridge to be 38 feet on deck. Yep. It's got an 8-foot bowsprit and empty and dry, according to Akin, who drew her in 1934, so we'll take that with a grain of salt. Right. Uh, she should be about 25,000 pounds. Yeah, that's not that heavy. No. So I would so, imagine loaded and wet for cruising closer to 30. Oh, we were looking at the M2s, all right? We decided that that roll bar was not gonna work with whatever you're gonna put out there, right? Yeah, that I think would so. be tricky with the bow spread. But we could put in, you know, it could go off a little bit. I've seen some people build some pretty interesting things to set yeah. the anchors just off a little bit from the bow spray. Yeah, I mean, this does not have to be straight off the boat. Oh, You're yeah. gonna put a bridle on there anyway, so it's actually not actually getting the load from that point, point. it's off the sides. It yeah. really doesn't matter as much, yeah. So actually just looking at the weight and size of the boat, that 45 is your starting point. 
Okay. That one right there. Yeah. I think so, Akin on the plans, if you remember correctly, I mean, this is a long time ago, so right? things have changed. They were saying uh, 65 pound for the secondary, and I want to say a 75 or 85 pound for the primary with 300 feet of chain on it. Goodness. With like a fisherman style. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. With that style, right? Now, yeah. Because those don't really hold anything. They're <laughs> lucky to grab something. That's yeah. what they are. So now it is. And then, and then after the fisherman, you had this, which was the Delta. Delta. And yep. that was a new cool thing, right? There was like, well, it actually performed. Well, it still drags, though. I mean, so then the CQR came out because it's got a little pivot point and that helped yep. it to dig in a little better, right? Well, then, like, Spade came out, and you got started in Manson, they started getting into the scoops, found out that those actually dig and hold better. So now you see a lot of them are going more toward this way. Rockna, the Ultramarine over there, Spade, and the Mantis. Yeah. Right? All have this scoop design, and it, they all kind of want to dig in a little better and hold a little better. So you're like, wait a minute, you just said yours is just like the others. Yes, I did. They're all good anchors. They all want to dig in, and they all want to pull, and they all want to hold. But yeah. the difference is how Craig has done the geometry in our anchor that it wants to not only write itself up, but it wants to dig down. Okay. Right? So put, put your hand and feel just the weight of that on your hand. So feel that, right? Yeah, that's not much. Right? Feel this one. A little more. Yeah. This is a nine pound anchor. This is an eight pound anchor. Come on over and feel the tip weight of this one now. It's one pound lighter. Yeah, it's a lot but it heavier. It feels like it's there, but it's not heavier. Yeah. It's just the geometry is forcing that eight pounds right there. There. Yeah. Whereas they're not. Same thing with the M2. So the design without it, it actually feels a little heavier. It's an eight pound anchor. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? And so that. And it just wants that? to stand up. It just up. wants to yeah. go over. It wants to go over and dig down. Yeah. No You're like, oh, but what if it's over like this? Well, once I start pulling, get you out of the way. Once, once you've actually started pulling on the boat, it wants just to rotate again. Right? Yeah. Same thing with this one. It's not as much. But it wants to flip over. It wants to dig in. It still has that tip weight. When you start pulling, you can see it wants it wants to dig down, right? The Rockna. Yeah, it wants to roll too. It just takes a little bit more to do it. I mean, if it's over, you're pulling like you should be. It's going to want to do it too. But yeah. ours is just a little faster than that. So then you're spinning more than two nights at anchor in a place where you may be spinning around. That's where that's going to come handy because you're going to reset fast with dirt. Yeah. Right? Well, this reset's good. No, it's horrible. It's horrible, right? I, I, the people joke that uh, they've drugged their uh, the Delta around the world. Around the world. <laughs> right? I've been watching you guys since you first laid the keel. Yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah. So I can't wait till you guys get finished up with this. Yeah, yeah, me either. It'd be nice to be on the water. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know how far out of sync things are, but how close are you? Um, the videos are like roughly one to two weeks behind real time. Did you be that close? Yeah. Oh, yep. very cool. Wait, yep. Make it that way. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> it feels tight, but... Wait a minute, you're the voice behind the camera, aren't you? Yes. Yep. Yes! Yep. All right. I'm the hand behind the camera. <laughs> very nice. Oh, thank you. Like, I have no interest in wooden boats whatsoever, <laughs> but I love the videos you guys put out. Yeah. I have a 34 Bristol myself, oh, cool. nice. and I'm planning on quitting my job in two years to sail Good around the world, so like nice. I'm on the same schedule as you are. Okay? Yeah, that's awesome. So it's kind of cool to follow along with you guys as you put everything together. It was encouraging to see a lot of fans. <laughs> that was awesome. And a great many of them were working on their own projects and doing really amazing things too. I had dreamt of building a boat for years and I was trying to figure out how to fund it and I followed you guys for a while and kind of figured it out and I yeah. started the channel six years ago nice. and we're fully planked and building out the interior and have a big following and that is supporting it. What's what's the channel? It's uh, Acorn to Arabella. Oh Journey cool, of man. Right yeah, on. So cut all the trees. Where are you doing that at? Isn't uh, it in, in the Massachusetts. Pacific? Oh in Massachusetts. So the Pacific is Leo. Oh okay. okay. Yeah. So we're That's, not doing a restoration, it's a new build. That's fantastic. But harvested all the trees, mowed all the lumber, did the whole shebang. I never would have started it if you guys hadn't kind of like know, paved man. that way. That's so cool. thank you so much. And I'm happy the project's working out well for you. Yeah, yeah, it's been That's great. Awesome. I would love to, to chat, but I see you have an adoring public yeah. and I will let you get to. Let's see if you don't <laughs> know. Well, nice but, to meet you. Yeah, you as well. Nice to meet you, Brian. Thank you very much. Because there was a YouTube booth, 
we got to meet Odd Life Crafting, which was really great. Uh, Duca could recognize Steve <laughs> from across the way, and it was great to see that recognition and um, to speak um, the tiny bit of Brazilian Portuguese I know. <laughs> So that just about wraps it up for now. But over the next few weeks, look out for a couple of bonus episodes from The Boat Show that we didn't have time to include in this episode. As mentioned, we'll talk with Nate from Seafrost about the reefer units. We'll meet with Clamp Tight for a demonstration of their clamping tool. We'll hear more from Mantis Anchors about grab hooks and swivels. And Steve and Anne have a long chat with friends of Anne who have a lot to say about cruising and living aboard their 28-foot Bristol Channel Cutter. So keep a lookout for those videos to come out soon, and we hope you enjoy a bit more from the United States Boat Show in Annapolis. It was really great to, to see old friends, to make some new ones, to spend some time on some boats, and uh, to go lay our hands on some anchors and some rigging supplies and see some uh, cool new ways of doing things and, and uh, just all the different options and ways to, to get out on the water. and how all these different folks are getting that accomplished from 28 you know, foot cruising boats all the way up to gigantic monstrositous uh, catamarans. And a special, special thanks to Cindy and her family on SV Majestic who hosted us and allowed us to sleep aboard their boat the whole time with their family. Um, we shared a great many meals with good folks too and we met a few good people at the meetup on Saturday as well. So yeah, Friday, thanks to everyone who made it. Yeah, Friday. It's all. It's all. <laughs> all the days were. Right. It was so fast and a blur, but but I'm so glad we went. And it was really cool to to bump into a bunch of followers and hear their tales of uh, what they've been up to and things that they've been inspired to to tackle and do. And that's one of the, the greatest things to come out of all of this, in my opinion, is spreading a little inspiration and helping people uh, push their limits, which is what life's all about. Keep sharing your stories with us. We love to hear them. I'm gonna go sailing around yeah, the world. Everyone's, I hear that's all the rage. I'm gonna start a YouTube channel. Yeah, um, yeah I'm thinking about quitting the build and buying a blast cat. You should totally to try out one of these plastic catamarans because they go really fast. I hear that's Storage all that's everywhere. It's about. You don't need fast. any varnish really anywhere. No. Um, just some wax. You can get rid of all that gleam. Yeah. Down below, we would have a lot of bright work down below. So, yeah. Where it belongs. <laughs> yeah, don't put it in the sun. <laughs> exactly. exactly.